Well, hello. Welcome to Water of Life. We are so glad you are joining us online today. My name is Julianne, and I'm going to be your online host. I work with our outreach departments, both local outreach, which is at CityLink, and our global outreach, which work with which works with our missionaries and mission teams and partners all around the world. So it's my pleasure to be here with you. Uh, we want to say welcome to those of you online. We know sometimes it's um, you're unable to be here due to maybe illness or you're traveling for work or some other circumstance. And so we are so glad that you are still committed to being a part of fellowshipping with us here at Water of Life today. And for those of you maybe who are new at Water of Life or new to online, we want to say an extra special welcome to you. We're so glad you're here and one of the best ways for you to get connected at Water of Life is by sending a text message to the number 818-818 and write the word new here all one word in the body of the text message and you'll get something sent back to you so that you can fill it out and we can make sure if you have any questions we can answer them or if there's information you're looking for but mostly so you feel welcome here at Water of Life because we really are glad that you are here. Well, I do have a couple of things I'd like to share with us as a church family today. And the first one is our annual ministry review. And that is coming up um, next weekend on February 6th. It'll happen after our services are over at 2.30 here at the Fontana campus. And this is a time where our church comes together, our leaders come and they share what has God has done in the past year in 2021, where um, our, all of our tithe funds have gone, the, the things we've supported, the goals we set out, how much of those we met. And so um, if you're interested in that, we want to invite you. And then also as a part of that meeting, we're looking at this coming year, 2022, and all that God, we feel God has called us to do and what goals and vision we have for the year. So again, if you're interested, that will be next weekend on February 6th here at the Fontana Worship Center at 2.30. And another opportunity we have coming up is for all the couples out there, maybe married or just a uh, couple. And we have a, the marriage ministry is putting on a Valentine's Day dinner dance. And the it's not actually going to be on Valentine's Day. It'll be the Friday before on February 11th from 6 to 9 here at Water of Life. And this is an opportunity, again, for um couples to invest in their relationship, build memories together, maybe have a really fun night. Um, that there is a cost to this. It's $60 per couple, but we're gonna they're going to serve dinner and there's going to be entertainment, dancing. So if that's something you're interested in, maybe you haven't made Valentine's Day plans yet or you're looking to add something else to your weekend, uh, this is a, maybe something that you might want to consider. And the last thing is our in, our quarterly mechanics ministry. Um, I, I do work with our CityLink team, and this is a very, very special ministry because it provides basic um, care and mechanical services to cars. So changing oil, putting air in tires, things like that. And so um, this service is provided for women that um, maybe don't have a spouse or a significant other to do that for them. They're either widowed or their husband or uh, spouse is away in the military or traveling for work or just a single parent. And so we try to meet the need for these women by doing these repairs on their cars. And uh, if you know someone or you maybe are interested in getting signed up to uh, participate in that, the event will be happening on February 12th, but you do have to sign up ahead of time so we can make sure we have all the right parts for your car. Um, and if you're on watching this online, you can just put it in the chat and our team will get your information or you can um, call the church office right now and they'll they'll take your name down and we'll be able to get you signed up. And for those of you maybe who are interested in helping, serving at the event, maybe you feel like you can't serve anywhere else, but you can work on a car, we would love to invite you to come. We always are in need of people to come and serve and work on these vehicles. So again, if that's you, head to our website or click the link in the chat so you can get um, in contact with the right person to serve at this event. Well, we want to remind you that you can always give uh, the Lord your tithes and offerings as a form of worship by going online or when you're here on campus, you can put it in one of our tithe boxes. Um, and so we also are also are going to move into a time of worship right now through singing um, and we're going to join the worship center. But before we do that, let me pray as we begin our service. So God, we do come to you, Lord, and thank you so much for this opportunity to meet online, to worship together, even if we can't be physically together. Uh, there's a sense of community we can have when we um, 
when we're meeting digitally and, and engaging God with people online and, and receiving a prayer, Lord. So I thank you for that opportunity. And God, we invite you into our service today that you would uh, be present, that we would feel your presence wherever we are, in a car, at a home, in a, in a restaurant, um, and that, Lord, you would move and have your way and speak to us. So God, we do give you this time and pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, well, we are going to be joining the worship center for some exciting worship. Again, we have the choir with us, um, and so we are excited to celebrate baptisms and to worship God together. Let's go ahead to the worship center. Well, hello, Water of Life. We're so excited to worship with you this morning. Shout out to everyone.
loved us so much that you gave your life so that we could live. You paid it all. You paid the ultimate price. We're so grateful. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength.
you got it. Come on. If you want it, you got it. I had it and I messed it up. It belongs to you. Now, we have an opportunity to celebrate with some of our brothers and sisters who said just that. They're saying, God, you can have my heart. You have it. And they're making a public declaration of that at the baptismal pool. Isn't that exciting? So before you take your seats, let's just celebrate with our brothers and sisters. And I'm going to send it out to Pastor Jakeem. And he's going to tell us a little bit more about baptism and what it all means. Pastor Jakeem. I want to say welcome to all those in the worship center, those watching online. We are outside currently by the baptismal, getting ready to celebrate with these men and women who have made the decision to take the next step in their faith journey and be baptized. Now, you may be asking the question, why baptism? Why is that so important? And there's a few reasons for why it's important in the life of the believer. The first is this. It's symbolic of burial. In the same way, when Jesus died on the cross for us, was buried and three days rose again, when we go through baptism, it is symbolically us when we go in the water, being buried with Christ. And when we come out of the water, being raised to new life with him. It's also a statement of faith. I think of the words of Paul when he says, because I've been crucified with Christ, the life I now live according to the faith in Christ Jesus. And one of the ways that we make that statement loud and clear is through baptism. It's also a sign of repentance. Repentance being this deep, inward, radical transformation that happens when Jesus gets a hold of our heart. That we were headed in one direction and we have this 180 experience and we start our life headed towards him. And lastly, it's a public testimony. Jesus says this, that if you confess me, before men, I will confess you before my Father in heaven. And one of the ways that we make this public testimony to our friends, our family, and to the rest of the world that my life is no longer my own, but it belongs to Jesus is in baptism. So we're so excited today as we get a chance to celebrate with these men and women, brothers and sisters who have made the decision to be baptized today. And the first person that is going to be getting baptized today is Jeremy. Jeremy, and to all you guys, we're so excited for this moment and you guys experiencing baptism. Jeremy, why don't you ask, uh, answer this for me? Who is Jesus to you? Jesus is uh, my Lord and Savior. I surrender to him. Um, I've been in a dark spot in my life, and he removed sin, and he removed anxiety, depression. He changed my life around and prepped me for this new future I have um, for healing and great healing to my wife. Amen, amen. And why do you want to be baptized today, brother? I want to be baptized to spread the good news and to surrender to him and give him faith, give, have faith in the Lord. Amen, amen. Well, Jeremy, it's uh, wonderful all these decisions you've made up to this point and we're so happy to have you here that on the basis of your confession of faith to Jesus Christ we're going to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and it's such a beautiful thing when children make this decision to follow Jesus and the next person being baptized is McKenna McKenna, why don't you tell us who Jesus is to you? He's my Savior and my Lord. Come on, somebody. And why do you want to be baptized today, McKenna? Because so, he, um, so I can start a new life with Jesus. Amen, amen. Head on in. so proud of you. Thank you for making these great decisions today to come here today. We just, uh, on the confession of your 
from your mouth that Jesus is Lord. We're going to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right. Yay, McKenna. Woohoo! The next person being baptized today is our sister, Jessica. Jessica, why don't you tell us who Jesus is to you? Well, Jesus to me, I have a testimony. Um, he is my peace. Uh, he brought me peace when I had anxiety and depression. And he restored my family, even though we thought it was over. It's never over if you have Jesus in your life. Amen. My savior. Amen. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and my savior because um, I had a rough childhood and, and I tried a suicide attempt. And when I took pills, he called my name and he's Jessica, go and drink milk. And, and I let out all that poison and God saved me because he has a plan for me. Amen. Amen. And why do you want to be baptized today? Um to show my father that he's he's my only father and that I will be following his steps to the day he comes to take me with him. Amen, amen. Yes, God, I love your name. It's yes to Jesus. <laughs> So on the basis of your confession of faith to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we're going to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah! Well, family, those in the worship center, those watching online, we're going to send it back to you. Sherry, I know you guys are going to continue worshiping and praising the Lord. And while you guys are in there, we're going to continue celebrating with our brothers and sisters within baptism. So, Sherry, back to you.
wonderful to be a part of a church that invites all cultures. Isn't, isn't this beautiful? We can all worship together as one family. I love this. Do you love it? Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for water of life and the way that we get to express ourselves in this place. We love you, God, and we thank you for the rest of this service. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Oh, come on, give him a big hallelujah. So before you take your seat, if you could just turn and greet someone and welcome them to Water of Life. God bless you. Welcome to Water of Life. If you're online, we want to welcome you. One of our other campuses want to welcome you. And Father, we just want to welcome you and say, Lord, thank you for baptism. Thank you for the people that just walked in there and went under the water and made a public declaration. Lord, it sums up everything that is good about you. Father, when we see ourselves get washed clean, get healed, and restored, get new hope, Everything about you, Father, that is good, it just all collectively explodes in baptism. So we pray today, Holy Spirit, you would come upon us, that you would come into the room, that you would teach us, that you would speak to us, that you would transform us, and Lord, for some of us, that you would heal us in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, did you happen to see the blind guy that came in and got baptized there? Did you see that? You didn't see that, okay, you should have seen that. That was awesome, that was amazing to watch them walk him down in there. Wow, that was really, I was just like, wow. Way to go, God. Um, let's see, what am I supposed to tell you? A couple of things really quick. Pastor Glenn is getting out of the hospital tomorrow. So um, he is going to be going back to Casa Colina for the next three months to do rehabilitation and he needs a house to rent for the next three months. So if you know of a home that he could rent for the next three months, that would be awesome. You could call a church office, get a hold of my assistant tomorrow, and we will try to fix him up with something because there's no houses to rent out there anywhere right now. So second thing is, is out on the patio, we have done something that we typically and historically haven't done, which is put initiatives out on the patio for you to sign up for. And I wanna explain that to you and tell you why we're doing that because we're collecting signatures to try to get a referendum added to the ballot in November that allows people to make a choice where their money goes for um, education for their children. And um, I understand that's a very hot topic for a lot of people. I, I also understand we have a situation in California where we have veered off so far from what really education should be to what it has become. Um, and I say that with a master's degree in education and a Ryan single subject K to 12 credential. I'm credentialed to teach school in California and have for years. Um, years ago taught school in California and we are not in a good place and there needs to be a choice where people can choose where to put their kids. That's why we are out on the patio. So um, if that is an issue for you, I. I'm fine for you to send me an email. I will be happy to interact with you on it because some people have said, you know, I'm struggling with that. So I get that. If that's your, your position, I'm fine to talk with you about it. Finally, 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 we have a bunch of small groups coming out and we need some small group hosts and leaders and we would love to train you to be a small group leader. You can sign up out on the concourse, but we're going to be doing a bunch of new series. In fact, we're starting one today and um, we are putting small groups around our series. We do that all the time. And we need some small group hosts and leaders. So we'd love to train you to do that. So Father, we pray that you would come as we open up this new series on emotions and toxic things that go on inside of us, God, that you would come and touch us. Holy Spirit, speak to us in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, 
Okay, you got a Bible, an iPad, a phone, turn to Matthew chapter 15. We're going to jump on the Word there today. We're going to start a new series. It's a five-part series on emotions that can kill your heart. Anybody know that you got some of those? Uh, we all have some toxic emotions, friends, like anger and envy and jealousy, things that can guilt, they can ruin your life, and they do ruin some of our lives. We all have emotions. They're a huge part of our lives. They're supposed to be part of our lives, and some of them are good, and some of them, when they're overused, are bad, and they become very toxic for us. So we talk about those kinds of things. Um, sometimes, have you ever noticed this about emotions, is that if you do something, then you ask yourself later, why did I what? Why did I do that? And it came right out of your what? Your emotions. It came out of your emotions. You had a feeling or a sense that you were going to do something, and it just came right out of you. And have you ever had those things fly out of you, and you wish you could get them back? Hello? You did something or said something, and you went, oh, no. And you were trying to get it back and get it back and get it back and get it back. And see, the truth is we've all learned to monitor our emotions and some of us monitor better than others, but we've all learned to monitor our emotions. Now, I'm glad that you learned to monitor your emotions, and I'm glad that I did too, because I learned that in school, didn't you? You know, because you, that means you can't talk when you want to talk, you can't yell at people when you want to yell at them. You're not supposed to do all those things, is that right? Hello? Somebody taught you that. So you had a, a filter that went over your emotions. Now, the problem with that filter is sometimes it doesn't work. Have you noticed that? And things just come flying out of you, and you're like, where did that come from? Where did that come from? You know, hopefully you've learned to manage your emotions well enough that you could get a job. Did you notice when you went into your interview, you felt some things, but you didn't say those things. Is that right? And you didn't say those things because you knew if you did, you what? That's right. You wouldn't have got the job. <clears throat> you also figured that out when you were out on your first date, didn't you? Now, you felt some things and you thought, I better not say that or there won't be any more dates. Is that right? And some of you were so good at monitoring your emotions that you got all the way to, the, to being married. And then what happened? Oh, then you got married and you figured out, oh, no, I can't keep monitoring my emotions. And then it got really hard, didn't it? Yeah, that's why we say marriage is sometimes really hard because the truth is we monitor our emotions. And I'll tell you the difference between monitoring your emotions and letting Jesus heal them is gigantic because Jesus is in the business of healing broken emotions. The Holy Spirit wants to get inside of you and touch places that are damaged, wounded, and hurt and bring healing to you. So the next five weeks, we're going to talk about different emotions. Today, we're going to talk about the center of your emotions, which is your heart. So we're going to go to the heart today, and then the next few weeks, we're going to talk about different emotions, some of them that are very toxic, like anger and guilt and bitterness, and then we're going we're gonna to talk about how the Holy Spirit wants to heal him. Remember, Jesus said this, my peace I give to you. What? You know, my peace I give to you. The world isn't going to give you peace, but I, I, I will put peace in you. Friends, that literally means where you have chaos inside and your emotions are screaming and flying all over the place, that Jesus wants to come in and start to put order back where your chaos is. And how many of you know we all need some what? Some order inside. We do. We need some peace inside. So here's where we're going to go. We're going to go into John chapter 15, because in John chapter 15, there's a great picture of Jesus talking about the heart. Now, it takes a while to get to that picture, so I want to frame this up for you. In John chapter 15, there's a confrontation, and it is not pretty. It's just like super classic Jesus. It's like Jesus at his very best, just being who he was. He stood up against this group of people called Pharisees or religious leaders, and they were the only people he really pushed back on. They're the only people that he really had issues with. And when Jesus has an issue with you, how many know that's not a good day? Hello? <laughs> this is like, you don't want to be on the opposite side of the field from Jesus. You know, you want to be on the same team. And so these guys are on the opposite side of the field, and here we go. It says in verse 15, chapter 15, verse 1, it says, Then some of the Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem. So stop right there. This is a big deal. Now, we don't read it like a big deal because it just sounds like, well, whatever, they came from Jerusalem. No, 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 no. That's 80 to 100 miles, depending on where you were going, and they walked. Okay, do you have, you got this? That's like four days probably of walking from Jerusalem to Galilee. 
So they why? So this is a big deal, and this is a big drama. They set the stage intentionally where there would be a crowd of people around them, and they were going to confront Jesus publicly to try to trap him. So here, here we go. How many know this would be, this is stupid. You don't try to trap Jesus, but they did. Okay. So here they go. Why, they ask him a question, why do your disciples break tradition of the elders? Okay, whoa, most of us don't get that at all. We're like, what does that mean? Okay, let me help you with that. Tradition is not the same as a written law in the Old Testament. Does that make sense? So there were laws written in the Old Testament, Book of Leviticus, Ten Commandments, uh, Book of Exodus. Many of you know about those laws, some of you don't, but there were laws written in the Old Testament. They're not talking about those laws. Those are written laws. This was called oral tradition. So these were things that they passed down with their what? With their mouths. They talked about them. And they added these things to what God was doing. How many of you know we do the same thing? I see Christians do this all the time. You know, this much is really good for God, so we better do more. Uh, is that in the Bible to do more? No, but I think it's a really good idea, so we'll add it. How many know you get in trouble when you add things to God? We all get in trouble when we do that. So here these guys go. They added a bunch of things. Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They do not wash their hands when they eat bread. Are you kidding? That sounds like your kids. Yeah, okay. And he answered them and says to them, why do you yourselves transgress the commandment of God? Whoa, for the sake of your tradition. So here's where Jesus just went. Not to the oral tradition, he went back to the written law. Does that make sense? To what was written down in the Old Testament. That's where Jesus goes. He said, you guys talk about your tradition, but what about what God wrote? He said, you transgress the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition. Verse four, it says, for God said, Honor your father and mother, and he who speaks evil of his father and mother should be put to death. Whoa. But, but, you say, and anytime Jesus said that, he's making a really clear contrast between what was supposed to happen and what they said should happen. So they changed the picture. Here's what they said. God said, honor your mom and dad, and here's what they said. Whoever says to his father or mother, Whenever I have, whatever I have that could help you has been given to God. He is not to honor his father or mother. Okay, so whoa, whoa, whoa. This is all weird. Some of you are sitting there going, I don't understand. Just hang on for a second. I'll try to help you. So here's what Jesus is saying. You should honor your mom and dad, but these guys are saying this. I got some cash, but I'm so godly, I'm gonna trash my parents and give my money to God because I'm such an awesome person. No, that's what they say. They're, they're saying, so really my parents don't matter and I don't have a responsibility to take care of my parents. I'll just take care of God. And Jesus said, no, 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 no. You don't have the right to make that decision. God already made that decision for you. You're supposed to honor your mother and father. And you just jumped right past that and you don't care. And not only did you jump past it, you taught other people to do the same thing. That's when he doesn't do well, whenever you lead other people astray. So he says this. He says, you told them they don't have to do this. And by this you invalidated the word of God for the sake of your tradition. You hypocrites, whoa, you might be sitting here going, big deal, no, 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 this was a public thing, this was not okay. He says, rightly did the prophet Isaiah prophesy about you. These people honor me with their what? With their lips or their mouths, but their what is far away? Their heart. Okay, so hold, hold, hold it, this is so important, you get this part. He went right for the what? He's talking, the word literally means your innermost person. All the stuff that goes on inside of you is referenced by the word heart. So he says, your heart is far away from me. In vain do you worship me, you teach his doctrines, the precepts of men. Now, this didn't go well, and we're gonna get into that in just a minute, but I want you to read the rest of this with me, if we could together. If you're online or one of our other campuses, let's read the next two verses together out loud, chapter 15, verses 10 and 11. It says, and he called the people to him and said to them, hear and understand, it's not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth that defiles a person. Okay, so I told you this is classic Jesus. That means when he says something, when he's done, you say what? What? 
what did you just say? I don't understand. How many of you know when you read your Bible sometimes that's what happens? Because Jesus was so amazing this way, he says these gigantic things and you have to unpack them and try to figure out, what did you just say? That sounds awesome, but I don't know what it means. So, so here's what he said. He called the people together. So, so watch this. I told you it was a drama and unfolded in front of a crowd. So he does his thing with these leaders, these, these Pharisees and these scribes, and then he looks to the people and he says, listen to me, I want you to get this. Here's what really should be happening with all of you. They've taught you things that hurt you. I'm gonna teach you what will bring life to you. And he says this, hear and understand, it's not what goes into your mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of your mouth defiles a person. So, 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 so when you read that, you're like, hmm, what did he mean? Well, I'm happy to tell you you're in good company because there was other people asking the same question. Let me read verse 12 to you. It says the disciples came and they said to him, do you know that you just blew up these Pharisees? They were totally offended by what you said. And Jesus answers the disciples and he said, let me tell you something. Every plant which my heavenly father did not plant shall be torn up and uprooted. Let these guys alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if a blind man leads another blind man, both of them will fall into the pit. <laughs> it's like, whoa, this is a bad picture, okay? You got that? I mean, that's pretty clear. It's a bad picture. Now, here's Peter asking the same question some of you are asking. What did you just say? I don't understand. Here's where he goes. Verse 15. Peter says to Jesus, explain the story, the parable to us. And Jesus said, do you still lack understanding also? You don't, you don't get where I'm going? And Peter's like, I, I totally don't get where you're going. Do you not understand that everything that goes into your mouth goes through your stomach and is it eliminated? But the things that come out of your mouth come from your what? They come from your heart and they defile you. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, lying, slandering. These things are the things that defile people, but to eat with dirty hands does not defile you. <laughs> so ease up on your kids, would you? No, I'm joking. I, I, I think if you ask Jesus, should your children wash their hands before they eat, I think he would say yes. He's not talking about it. He's talking about adding things to the law, making it really hard for people to function. Wash your hands, do all the things outwardly that look good. Does that make sense? That, 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 that's the whole picture here. Deal with your what? With your heart. How many of you know that that's been a hard thing for Christians and church for a long time? So, 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 let me go here, and some of you will resonate with this, some of you won't get this because you weren't around then, but anybody here remember when you used to wear a suit and tie to church? Huh? Some of the older people are like, yeah, and the younger people are like, what's a suit and tie, you know? You know, a suit, you actually wore a suit and tie. Yeah, it's interesting for me whenever people, I see people out in the crowd with a suit and tie, I'm positive that they're a guest. Somebody invited them to church, they've never been to church in their whole life, but they saw something on TV and they thought, I better wear a what? I better wear a suit to come to church. Now there was a day when people wore suits to church, is that right? And we called that, we'd say, you need to wear your what? Sunday best, that's right, some of you got that. You wear your Sunday best. That means you put your best clothes on. Now, I'm not sure what happened to that, but that all disappeared. Is that right? I mean, like today we have torn Levi's and shorts. I mean, what's up with shorts? You defiled me. I'm joking. No, 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 no. I mean, what, what happened? We went, here's what happened. We used to think it was really important to dress up the outside, but we didn't really deal well with the inside. And something happened where we started to figure out we've got to deal with the what? The inside and the outside is not nearly as important as what? The inside. That's what happened. That was what God, and listen, that's not a bad thing. I'm, wearing a suit is not a bad thing. But the bad thing is if you're dealing with the outside and you're not dealing with the inside. And that's where Jesus is going here. He's saying, listen, you need to figure this out. You need to deal with the inside. If you don't, it defiles you. Now that's an interesting word that Jesus used, defiles you. Because you're like, what? I, I, I know this. Everybody in the room has said something that's defiled you. Is that right? Hello? 
You, you all have. You said something and when it came out of your mouth, you went, oh no. You wanted to pull it back in as fast as you could and you couldn't do it. Now here's what you didn't do. You didn't go, oh man, I just defiled myself. You didn't say that. Because you didn't even use that word. But deep in your heart, you know you did. You just felt like this, oh, I just wrecked those people I said that to. Oh, I wish I wouldn't have said that in that situation. Oh, that really wounded some people. Oh, I wish I could get that back. And you what? You can't. It, it went right out of you. And the word defile literally means to make common, to make something common. Now, that doesn't make a lot of sense to some of us because we're like, well, what does that mean, to make common? It means this, Christians are supposed to be uncommon. That's what it means. It means like the word when Jesus chose you, if you're a follower of Jesus and he chose you, then the Bible says he set you apart. The word, the religious term that we would use is sanctified you. And to be sanctified literally means to be what? Set apart. It means to be set apart, which means you are not common, you are uncommon common, which means you are not like everybody else. You are not supposed to be like everybody else, act like everybody else, or listen, talk like everybody else. So that means sometimes you go to work and people say things that are just so common. You're used to it. You go to a construction site. You go to your job somewhere and somebody starts throwing the F word around everybody and you're just like, that's just what happens here. I, I don't even think about it because that's what happens here. Now, it might not set well inside of you if you spent time with the Lord before you got to work and you've been laid down before Jesus and the Spirit of God's working inside of you and somebody starts flinging the F word around you or SH or B and people and you're you're like, whew, I really don't need that today, but I, you know, it starts to get inside of you. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Because there's a difference between what is common, normal, that people do all the time, and friends, this is now common. I mean, it's on television, it's not even deleted anymore. You're like, it's just how it is, and everybody's like, that's normal. No, 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 that's not normal. Jesus would say that's defiling, it's common and you're supposed to be uncommon. You're supposed to be healed inside. So you don't have to trash people all the time with your language. You don't try to get on top of people by speaking down to them. You know, and, and if you're sitting there going, well, you just don't know, you, no, 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 no. No, I grew up with all the words, friends. I understand all the words. I used all the words. I got suspended from school using all the words with my teachers. I understand. The, the truth is, there's no life there. I understand that as well. And what Jesus is trying to say is don't live like everybody else lives. I, he's really saying this to some of you. You are in bondage and I'm trying to break you out. That's why he was so angry at these guys, because they put people into bondage. And he was trying to help people get out of bondage. So he explained something. You're wounded in your heart, and your wound will come out of your what? Out of your mouth. It comes out of your mouth because it's in your heart. So he says, out of the heart comes what's in your mouth. So the reality is you might be sitting there saying this. Sometimes I say, I, I, I say things I don't mean. Have you ever said that? And Jesus would say, really? You know, maybe what you're trying to say is sometimes I say things I wish I didn't say out loud. Because you already thought them inside. They were, Jesus would say this, no, that's part of you. Do you, do you ever hear people say this today? I, I do, this is a weekly occurrence. You know, if you follow sports or something, and this, that's, you know, for me, if I'm reading about an athlete or something, you hear this almost every single week. An athlete will get up and apologize for something, a DUI, using cocaine, sleeping with his teammate's wife, you know, whatever it is. They'll, they'll get up and they'll say, really, that's not me. That's, that's not me. That, that was out of character for me. So I'm sorry that it happened, but it's really not a reflection of me. Really, who was that? Because I'll tell you something, Jesus doesn't say that. What we've learned to do in our culture is compartmentalize. So we say this, that, that you know, I'm better than that, but Jesus would say, no, you're not. No, 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 no. You're just very common inside, you're defiled. And you need healing. But we don't like that. Some of y'all don't like that right now when I say that you're like, you know, don't be talking to me, pastor. You know, be, no, 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 really, really you, this like makes you angry. It makes you frustrated because <laughs> you're defiled. Okay, let's keep going. I'm playing with you. See, 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 the truth is when things come out of us, it's because our filter got weak. 
because our emotions got away. Because we couldn't control what we were feeling. It just came flying out. You know, if you read this, think about some of these things that he spoke out. For out of the heart come evil thoughts. Hold, hold, hold it. Evil thoughts. Those are inside. But they, they start to breed in life, death, things inside of you. Murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, lying about people, slandering people. The book of Mark chapter 7 t- tells the same story and adds some of these. Envy, greed, malice, deceit, and arrogance. And you know what all those things do? They wreck your relationships. Just think about this. Think about the marriage you lost. Think about a friendship you lost. Think about somebody you really cared about and it fractured. Go back through that list I just gave you and you'll find one of those emotions in there that fractured your relationship. Somewhere you will find one of those happened to fracture your relationship. Maybe multiple of those happened. But for sure, at least one of those things happened. Because see, those things wreck relationships. They destroy people and they kill your heart. It's like this. If people could see what was really inside of you, you would freak out. I mean, come on, let's, if you were like a paper bag and we could just pull you inside out, you go, oh, look at that. Look at those evil thoughts. But, 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 but hold it, God knows everything. Jesus knows, the Spirit of God searches your heart, the Bible says. He knows everything I think. He knows all my wicked thoughts. He knows every selfish thing. He knows everything about you. And amazingly, he's still crazy about you. Somebody should be excited about that. I mean, really, come on. He knows everything about us. Now, here's the problem with this. Now, I I wanna illustrate this for you if I could for a second. Now, some of you might remember these two people. This is Mr. and Mrs. Mug. Took you a few seconds to figure that out, okay. Now, my grandkids, would die to do this. They come in my office at home every week and say, Papa, please, let me take the top off. And I say, no way. It is not happening. You are not going to get into Mr. and Mrs. Mug. Now let me tell you about Mr. and Mrs. Mug. They were here a long time ago when we did a series on relationships. Um, This is my wife, Gail. (laughs) And this is supposed to be me when I had a brown mustache. Um, these are nice looking people, you know, she's pink and he's blue and they're just like you, you know, they're like, we're happy people and you know what? They look so good until they collide in the relationship with each other. And you know what happens when you collide with other people? Your beads start flying out. Yeah, that's exactly what happens, isn't it? You're like, Oh, I thought I had that in control. It was all good. I was, I, it was all happening. I was happy until I met you. You are responsible for that. No, 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 no. Here's what Jesus said. I'm not responsible for anything. Those were already inside of you. They just came out. I see, here's the problem for some of you. You don't think you have any beads. No, you don't. You, you completely think you are beadless. But I got news for you today. Jesus thinks you have beads. The Bible teaches you have beads. The Bible says what you do with your beads will determine your destiny. And see, the truth is a lot of us think my problem isn't my problem. My problem's her problem. She brings out the worst in me. And she thinks, no, you bring out the worst in me. And see, friends, the truth is, the worst is already in you. And until you come to grips with that, Jesus can't heal you. And Jesus is your healer. Listen to Proverbs chapter four, verse 23. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the springs, the issues of life. The NIV puts it this way, above all else, above everything else, guard your heart. For what? 
Everything you do flows out of your heart. Now, here's what it's not saying. Put a wall up around your heart so nobody can ever touch it. It's not saying that. It's saying this. Be careful and don't let things defile your heart. Don't let things defile your heart because if your heart gets defiled, it will come out of your what? It'll come out of your mouth and it'll wound people around you. And so the reality is God is trying to say, listen, guard your heart because it impacts the people around you. And and, and if you guard your heart, you can protect yourself and the people around you. Listen to Psalm 139, verse 23. Search me, O God, and know my what? My heart, test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive or hurtful way in me and lead me in an everlasting way. So, 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 friends, this is a daily journey with Jesus. You just have to figure this out. You're broken inside. Everybody's got beads, friends. I mean, listen, you're never gonna be beadless. This side of heaven, that's not gonna happen. Everybody, here's what you want, you wanna get to this place where the Holy Spirit is dealing with your stuff inside, so when you collide in somebody and it comes flying out, it's not so nasty. No, really, that's what happens. You never get to a place this side of heaven where you don't ever have an issue, but you gotta figure this out. When God is at work in you, he can cleanse, heal, restore, and redeem your dirty old beads. And when he does that, you become way more life-giving. When you, have, when you collide with people, it is not so wicked. So, so, so here's the deal. When something comes flying out of your mouth, you ought to think this, there's something wrong with my, my heart. Don't do what you've been taught to do in our culture today, which is compartmentalize and say, that's not me. That's out of character for me. No, 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 that is you. But you need healing in that place. Some of you live every single day like this, friends. You live every day compartmentalized, telling yourself, that's not me. Well, let me ask you a question. Have you asked the people around you if that's you? Because you might get a way different answer if you ask those people. And the truth is, for all of us, we're blind to ourselves. Friends, we're blind to what happens. The reality is this, what comes out inside needs work. And friends, only the Holy Spirit can do that. You gotta figure this out. This is a Holy Spirit thing. Listen to this, Romans chapter 12, verses one and two, it says, therefore I urge you brothers and sisters, in view of God's great mercy, he knows how dirty your beads are inside, but he's still crazy about you. Offer up your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but listen, don't be common like everybody else. Don't give yourself a pass and excuse like everybody else, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Oh, 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 hold it. Be transformed by the renewing. What does that mean? It means all of your dirty stuff Starts right where? In your head. It's what you're watching, it's what you're reading, it's what you're listening to. That's how you end up being defiled. You end up allowing things that get in your head and they move into your what? Into your heart. So if you put things in your head that are life-giving, your heart will be life-giving. If you allow things in your head all the time that are dirty and broken and wicked, then your heart is gonna be end up dirty and broken and wicked. That's what Jesus is trying to say. So you gotta figure this out. How do you do this? I was hoping you'd ask that question. Last Saturday, I did a men's breakfast kind of thing here. We didn't actually eat breakfast, but we did a morning together. And I did a teaching that I'm gonna probably do here sometime later this year. I'll split it into two weeks and do it. But the reality was I tried to explain how this happens. How does God heal you from the inside out? So let me help you with that. Could you guys snag him? So I'm afraid I'm gonna like, can you grab him? (laughs) He's like grabbing the beads, isn't he? Okay. So here, this is important. If you don't get anything else today, please get this. You do not get healed inside in a secondary relationship with Jesus. What do I mean by that? I mean this, I talk to Christians all the time and I say, are you spending time with God? Well, no, I listen to worship music. That's not spending time with God. Well, I listen to five people on the radio and they all have great messages, that's not spending time with God. I am not against worship music, and I am not against listening to people on the radio. I am for this, time with God. Those are secondary things, 
secondary relationship with God, the only way you get healed deep inside is through a primary relationship with God. That's not my opinion, that's what Jesus said. Jesus said this, go to your closet and shut the door and your father who sees you in secret will reward you. Okay, hold, 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 hold it. Do you go to your closet ever, get still, and get face to face with God? Because some of you have been Christians for years and years and years, and you have never, ever gotten healed inside. And you haven't gotten healed inside because you don't have a primary relationship with God. You function on secondary level with God all the time through somebody else's worship, somebody else's message, somebody else talking, not you and Jesus face to face. The only way you get healed is when you are alone with God and you get face to face. This is when, the, listen, search me and know me. Now here's what people say to me, and don't get mad at me because I'm trying to help you. Pastor Dan, I listen to worship music all the way to work and that's when I have my quiet time. No, you can't be still on the freeway. No, really, you can't. And so how do you deal with that? Well, you change your clock. Well, I have to get up at four o'clock to drive, then get up at 3.30 and spend 20 minutes with Jesus before you get up at four o'clock. Well, that means that you can't watch your show the night before, that's right, it does mean that. Is your show more important than time with God? You gotta, you just, we all have to decide this, friends. This is how the journey goes. If you're in love with Jesus, then you will make the time the day before, go to bed earlier so you can get up earlier, and you can be face to face with God, listen, and get healed. Because you need to get healed. And you can't get healed in a secondary relationship with God. You get healed when you're face to face with God. You get healed when you're alone with God. You get healed when you're still with God. You get healed when you give the Holy Spirit an invitation to touch you. You can't do that when you're busy. So, 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 what does that mean? It's hard work. Is it hard? It's totally hard. It's hard to be still in our culture today. Because, listen, anybody tried to do this? You try to get still with God, shut the door, and what happens in your little peanut up here? Every single thing that you need to do for the day starts blowing through your brain. Is this right or not? It happens. And you're like, this is hard. It's hard. You know what I do? I take a piece of paper and a pencil with me, and I just write those things down, and then I set them aside, and I go, okay, that's done. Now I'm going to be with you. I'm not going to worry about those things. i got to push that away. I need to be face-to-face if I want to be healed, filled, restored, and refreshed by God. I have to do that, you have to do that. So, so, so what does that mean? Let's wrap this up, it's a point number three in a little outline. How do you deal with guilt? Because some of you are running around with it all day long. I said you haven't been healed because you're in a secondary relationship, that means that you live with guilt all the time. Now sometimes your, your guilt is false guilt, sometimes it's real guilt. Usually when we feel guilty, it's because we're guilty. Sometimes it's because somebody else shamed us and made us feel guilty. The reality is, When you do something that you shouldn't have done, you say something you shouldn't have said, you feel what inside? Guilty. That's called your conscience. Is that right or not? Your conscience. Now some of you are like, I I don't ever feel that. (laughs) That's a scary thing. Because the Bible has a word for you. It's seared. That means that you seared your conscience. That God came to you so many times and tried to talk to you about the way you treated the people around you, the way that you let your beads fly out and pound everybody around you, and you just didn't listen, you justified it, you, you, you made an excuse for it, you told everybody it really wasn't you so long that now you don't feel anything, but the people around you still feel everything. And friends, you gotta figure this out. If you wanna get healed and you're carrying guilt around, it doesn't go away. You you, you gotta just understand it's part of the journey. Listen to what Proverbs 28, 14 says. Blessed is the one who is always cautious, but whoever hardens their heart will fall into evil. If you sear your heart with God, friends, you are in danger. Here's what I hear people say, oh, they create, we, we're really good at this. We create narratives, excuses. Like I said, we, we compartmentalize stuff. But, but people say, you know, I was just drunk and I lost my mind for a second. Really, 
But when you lost your mind for that second, you destroyed this other person's life. And see, the reality is denying that you're guilty doesn't eliminate it, it actually empowers it. When you deny that you're guilty, that you're defiled inside, you actually empower it. And then you start to live like this in a debt debtor relationship with the people around you. Please get this. This is so important for some of you because you're stuck here. A debt debtor relationship means I know I've hurt people around me. I'm guilty. I feel horrible. And I live with it every single day. And so every relationship you have is a wounded and broken relationship. And so what you, I call this a debt debtor relationship. Have you ever said this? I owe them an apology. Hello? Anybody ever said that? You guys are really quiet. Are you thinking about lunch or what? It's like, listen, a debt debtor relationship. I owe them an apology. Well, actually, you might owe them way more than that, but you can't even fathom that. That's a debt debtor relationship. Because when you owe something to somebody else all the time, you never have healthy relationships. It's like this. Have you ever seen, this might be you, but have you ever seen somebody do this, parents? They work too much and they feel guilty because they're not home with their kids or their wife or their family enough. And they say, I better do something because I am in debt to my family so I'll buy them something. It's the American way. You know, we, 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 we're in debt to them, so we think if we buy them something, we buy our kids more toys, then somehow we bought ourselves out of the debt, debtor relationship, and you can't. You can never fix what's broken inside of you by buying something else for somebody. Do you understand this? Now watch. When we talk about this and you think about what does that mean for you? What does that mean for you? What does that mean for you? It literally means this. If you owe something to somebody, should you give it back? Yeah, restoration is really important. It's all over the Bible. Restoration, that means you give back. I mean, do you remember the story of Zacchaeus? Luke chapter 19, Zacchaeus, the little tax gatherer, was like Matthew, tax gatherer. You know, that, that, that means... They took from other people, so they stole from other people, so every relationship they had was a debt-debtor relationship. Does that make sense? They stole from everybody, they owed everybody they knew. So every relationship they had was what? It was broken, every relationship was broken. So they have debt-debtor relationship with everybody that they know. And so what does Zacchaeus say when he crashes into Jesus? I will give them back four times what I owe them. Well, the law of Leviticus was to give back double what you took from somebody. So if the law of Leviticus in Exodus was to give back twice, and Zacchaeus said, I'll do four times what I stole because I want to make it right with somebody. And Jesus said, salvation has come to this house today. So, 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 hold it. That's really important. What did he say? He just recognized Zacchaeus figured out he's got some beads inside, and they are dirty beads. And he's living in guilt, in a debt debtor relationship with everybody around him, and he needs to make it right. Now, here's the truth. A lot of you can't make it right. You can't, you can't fix what you did. You can't undo what you've already done. And some of you, because you carry your guilt around, it makes you really angry at the people you love the most. You get really mad at them because you're like, I am stuck with you. You are, because of what you did. And the only people, the only person that can unstick you, friends, is Jesus. The people around you can't fix that. And you get mad at them because they can. It's point number four in your little outline. That to face guilt is so hard because it leaves us standing alone, unable to fix what we've already done. I mean, you can't fix being unfaithful. Once you've been unfaithful, you can't fix that. You can't fix being drunk and losing your temper. You can't un, 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 un be drunk and unfix your temper. You can't unlose your temper, unlose your drinking too much. You can't undo a bad childhood, and you can't return to a first marriage that's already gone. 
All you can do is feel angry inside and carry guilt around over and over and over till you come to God and you say, I need to face this and get it fixed. Because see, for some of you, you face it and you're like, it kills me because it's so final. I can't do anything. You can't. You can't do anything, but Jesus can do everything. You gotta get this. Some of you try to walk with God so long and you don't understand you need deep healing inside. God wants to heal your broken heart, your emotions. God wants to remove guilt from you. Jesus said, I have paid your debt. You do not have to be defined by your past. You don't have to be defined by things that you've done. Listen, Paul the apostle was a murderer. Hold hold it, I'm gonna say that again. Paul that wrote half the Bible was a murderer. He killed Christians. And do you think there were not family members who loved those people that hated Paul? They hated him for what he, he had a reputation as a, a person who was destructive and he hurt the people around him. But that same guy said this. Romans chapter eight, verse one. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. Because you belong to him, the power of his spirit has freed you from the power of sin that was leading you to death. See friends, those of you who are sitting there right now, you're guilty, you're ashamed, and, and, I, and I brought all this to the surface, you're like, oh, 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 I'm never gonna forget Mr. and Mrs. Mug because it's inside of me. Well, let me help you with something. It doesn't have to stay inside of you. You don't have to live there. I grew up in a really broken home. By the time I was 12 years old, my mom had been drunk so much and I hated her so much. I was just like a boiling cauldron of anger. I tested on a TJTA test once to get married and I scored a 99 on anger. Yeah, that's right, that's what my wife said when she saw that. Should I really marry this guy, you know? I had people come to me and say, do you know sometimes when you get in fights with people, you look like you could kill somebody? And I thought, probably could. No, because I just lose my mind. Because I was so broken inside. But when I figured this out, that Jesus knew how broken I was and how defiled my beads were, and he still loved me, it changed everything for me. It put me on a road where I said, look at I am going to get healed. I am not going to lose my destiny to my brokenness. What was meant for evil, God will turn to good if I will yield to him and yield to him and spend the time that it's gonna take to get healed. And friends, some of you have gotta figure that out. God has done everything he can to free you from guilt so you can stand face to face with him. Listen to Isaiah. Chapter one, verse 18, let us reason together. That, that, that's just crazy. Let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, I will make them white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, I will make them like wool. Listen, if Paul can say there's no condemnation and I killed people, but I don't live guilty anymore because Jesus has healed me. I don't live ashamed anymore. I don't run away anymore. If I make a mistake, I just stop and own it. And I go on from there with a clean slate. I don't allow these things to pile up and defile me inside. So I want to ask you to stand and bow your heads right now, would you? Romans 3.23 says, We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the Bible teaches that God sent Jesus as a guilt offering for us. You know, you've broken the law. There's no question about that. I've broken the law. We've all broken the law. How did you break the law? I I, I don't know. Did you break it with your body, with your anger, with your lying, with your stealing, with your cheating? Here's the truth. You are guilty. I'm guilty. You're guilty. But here's the truth. You come to Jesus, you're not condemned. It's such an amazing thought. You're guilty, but you are not condemned. God is your healer. So 
I want you to bow your heads right now. Father, we come to you, Holy Spirit. I pray that you'd move over the crowd right now here, people online, people on the other campuses. Father, you alone can remove the guilt, the shame, the anger, the broken emotions. Some of you have been carrying this around for a lifetime. And God wants you he wants to begin to heal you today. I want to pray for you. If that should put your hand up and just say, it's me. You know, I live there all the time. I know, and I know, and I know. Father, we want to come to you. This is a huge amount of people out here right now with your hands up. And Jesus is your healer. He's your redeemer. He is the lover of your soul. I want to ask you right now, if you're out there, come forward and let me pray over you before we go home today. I haven't done this in any of the other services, but I really want to do this for you. If you just feel guilty, it's okay. Your guilty is charged, but you are not condemned. I, I, I want to break that in you. That's what Jesus came to do. He wants to break bondage in your life, friends. He wants to set you free. There's an amazing story. Jesus told in Luke chapter seven. He talks to a guy named Simon who wasn't, he was angry about something that had happened in his home with a lady that was washing Jesus' feet. And Jesus said, I have something I need to teach you. He said, tell me, teacher. And he said, two people owed money to a money lender. One owed 500 denarii, that would be 500 days of work. The other owed 50. Neither of them had the money to pay back the debt, so he forgave them both. Which would love him more? And Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the larger debt that was forgiven. And Jesus said, you have judged correctly. And he turned towards the woman who was washing his feet, and he said to Simon, do you see this woman? When I came into your house, you didn't give me any water to wash my feet, yet she wiped my feet with her tears. And she wet them with her own heart, poured out on me and wiped them with her hair. You did not even kiss me when I came in the door, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven as her great love has been shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. Let me help you with something. The only reason I've ever done this that I do here today, the only reason I left coaching basketball and all the things that I loved to do that were passions for me was because Jesus forgave me for so much. I just thought, I didn't have to, I didn't owe him, I didn't have to give back, but he asked me to. And I said, Lord, whatever I could do, I'm so amazed that you would love me. Nobody else knew me, nobody cared about me, but you loved me with an everlasting love. I've never gotten over it. He loves you the same way. He cares about you the same way. He's intimate with you. He knows everything inside of each of you. He knows where you've been wicked, where you've been unfaithful, it's where you've been hurting to other people and where you've slaughtered the folks around you. Some of you, your anger has destroyed your most intimate relationships. And God wants to get you on a journey of healing today. And so Holy Spirit, we come to you right now. I just wanna invite you, open up your heart, open up your hands, open up to God today and tell him, Lord, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Some of you just need to say that, I'm afraid. This freaks me out. But God, I'm not gonna live guilty anymore. I don't wanna live like that anymore, Father. Today I come to you and I open up to you and I say, Father, heal me from the inside out, God. Touch me, Holy Spirit. You alone, God, have what we need. You have paid the debt. We are guilty, but we are not condemned. And so today, Holy Spirit, we come to you and we cry out and we say, God, heal me. Start me on a journey face to face with you where I would every day get up and cry out to you and say, Father, put back the pieces that are broken. 
Put back the things that have been shattered. Heal the relationships that need restoration, God. You can do, Holy Spirit, you can do what we cannot do. Father, you have power, authority, possibility over each life here that we don't have. And I ask you, God, to move with authority. Move with dreams and visions, God. Move with prophetic insight and words of knowledge, Lord. Move with revelation, God, that people would see what you see, Father. They would know what you know. They would see themselves as you see them, Father, not as damaged goods, but as healed people. Not as people that have fractured and shattered other people, but as people that are restorers of the breach. People that heal other people's woundedness because you heal theirs, God. And so, Father, thank you that you can do these wild, crazy things in humans. Thank you, God, that you're not looking for religious people. You're not looking for Bible scholars, God. You're looking for people with hearts that would chase after you. And so, Father, I pray for us. Every heart up here right now that you would brood over them, Holy Spirit, as we said last week, that you would shake the ground. You would start to rebirth in them what you intended them to be. And that they would start on a journey with you today that would be a lifelong journey for them that would shock them when they look back five years from now. Touch them, Holy Spirit, heal them. Restore fractured relationships, God. Restore their own hearts where other people wounded them, Father. Give back what the enemy has stolen from them, Lord. And God, there's some of you that are up here, you're just barely married right now. And you're like, we're just hanging by a thread. And I wanna speak over you that God is your healer. God wants you to stay together. God wants you to release each other. God wants to redeem and restore your relationship. God is stronger than your wickedness. God is greater than your shortcomings. God is able to do what you, neither one of you can do in your relationship. He can heal you, but you've got to run to him. Run to him, run to him every day. Close the door and run to him face to face. Invite his spirit to work inside of you. So Holy Spirit, we yield to you right now. We say, have your way in us in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, okay, now li listen and we're done. Please listen. This is like a beginning place for you. You gotta figure this out. Some of you need shepherd staff care. Some of you need counseling. Some of you need deliverance. You need sozos. You need healing rooms. We have all kinds of places for you at Water of Life to get in a journey of healing, but you gotta go there. You gotta go there. Some of you need to be in school of ministry where you get Bible study. Some of you need to be in a small group where you get other Christians around you to pray over you. We have teams of people that will sit with each of you individually and just bathe you in prayer so you can hear from God. Some of you don't understand how the Spirit speaks and you need to be in a place where God can speak into you and you can start to listen and know that voice. This is just a beginning place for you. Make a decision today. Listen, what God is doing to you right now, you need to think this, He can do it every single day. You don't have to live broken. I would not lie to you. I, 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 ha, you know, I haven't been mad like I used to be mad for 25 years, but I'll tell you what, I went through huge deliverance, huge deliverance time. Lots of counseling. I could have bought two new cars with all the counseling I paid for, but it just got me in a place where I could bow down before God without fear and open up, and the Holy Spirit just rushed in on me and healed me. In a moment, he healed me. After years of journeying with darkness, don't give up. Don't listen to the enemy speak to you. Don't listen to your flesh tell you this, you wicked, stupid idiot. What would you go up there for and think that God would forgive you? Listen to me. Jesus is crazy about you. He died for you. If, if you were the only person on the planet, he would have died for you. He's crazy about you. He knows your beads. Amen? God bless you. If you need prayer, just stay up here. We have a team of people behind you that would love to pray for you. Just stay up here if you would like prayer. and Our team will come up and pray over each of you. God bless. Well, we want to extend that same invitation to those of you who are watching online that um, don't miss out on this opportunity for God to 
continue to move in you, to speak to you, to heal you. So if you're online, we want to remind you that we do have pastors available right now that you can call um, our church office. The number again is 909-463-0103. You can talk to someone live or we have the ability for you to direct message chat, prayer chat with our teams online. Uh, like Pastor Dan said, don't let this opportunity pass you by. Um, and, and I just can't stress how, the importance enough of something that he said about just getting face to face with Jesus. And so I want to encourage you, if, if God spoke to you through Pastor Dan, through our services today, then uh, write down what he said and commit to you know, doing that thing, uh, tell somebody else so that there's some accountability around you so you can continue to walk forward into all that God has for you. So let me pray for us before we close out our service. Lord, we do thank you for this message and what you are doing here at Water of Life, through Water of Life, and especially in the lives of the people who are watching online right now. God, we know that each of us has places we need to surrender before you, that each of us has places where we need to um, improve, God, uh, grow in our getting face-to-face -face with you. And so, Lord, help us to commit to those things, speak to us. And God, we do pray for healing over every single person watching that's looking for a change. God, we know, like Pastor Dan said, you are the healer. You are the one who can do it. So, God, we're believing for that today in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, again, thank you so much for joining us online. It has been a wonderful privilege to be with you. We hope to see you again soon. And please don't forget to, again, take advantage of these opportunities for us to pray and minister with you. All right. God bless you. Bye-bye.